People of Earth. Anyway, it's me. Uh, so uh, here's a chronology of events that happened that uh, form this little video right here. Come with me, won't you? We're just going to keep doing this. Just going to keep... So last night I recorded uh, this uh, podcast called uh, Meat Mutants. Mutants of Meat. Um, which is basically a couple of co-hosts, one out of Australia, one out of New York, who sit around and make fun of Christians all day. Yeah, no, lots of fun. Um, so I thought, well, I can do that, <laughs> right? So I wanted to be on their show. Um, and then I wanted to sneak in that bit about nothingness that I'm sure most of you are familiar with, uh, to see if a couple of atheists could fall into my trap of admitting that, in fact, if they believe in nothingness prior to all things being the thing from which all things spring, that what they are admitting is that prior to all things, there is a concept for nothingness is nothing except a concept, right? Uh, you can't visualize it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and so once you have a concept that you say exists prior to the brain, where we believe concepts come from, if we're materialists, right? then you've necessarily got formless intelligence. Uh, and this formless intelligence is what is wafting everything into existence. It is not divorced from that existence. It is not a god creating things. It is uh, a symbiotic uh, process that seems to unfold. Well, it seems to unfold as a process, but it's really the now, the ever-present now. That is what the ever-present now is. Uh, so when you hear people talking about the now, that's what they're talking about, and everything that exists within the now um, includes time unfolding linearly, and so on and so forth. So, okay, I sort of got them to admit that, even though they didn't want to, or at least one of them. The other one was just like, I need a college education to get this. Um, which got me to thinking, why do you need a college education to get some of the things that come out of my mouth when I didn't get them from a college education? Ting! Light bulb! Um, well, that's because uh, most of what comes out of my mouth comes from insight. And so that got me to thinking, self, I thought, uh, what, is, what is insight? Maybe we need to explore what that is. Uh, and I put, I put on my, the, the various Facebook pages uh, out there, hey, do you want me to do a write-up of what this insight is, or do you want me to do a YouTube video? And so even though I wasn't planning on doing a YouTube video, the unanimous, unanimous consent was a uh, YouTube video. Uh, and sure, you all tried to butter me up with things about my uh, personality and charm. Uh, and really, we all know you're lazy and don't want to read. So with that in mind, here is this YouTube video on uh, what is insight. What it is, yo. Um, so what is it? <laughs> what do we mean by that word, insight? Um... I, I should say that my insight into insight, which I will share with you in a moment, actually came because later, in the same evening of yesterday, I was uh, watching a YouTube video uh, where it was Krishnamurti, Judah Krishnamurti, David Bohm, and someone whose name I forget, who's an Indian, um, he was like an Indian computer programming genius, circa like 1981 or something. Uh, but they were sitting around talking about intelligence um, uh, and, you know, are computers alive and that sort of thing. What separates a human from a computer if a computer can do uh, the same sort of thought tasks that a human can do at a greater speed? You know, remember that old 1980s conversation? Are we going to be outdated by computers and made irrelevant and all that? One of the interesting things that they came to, or that Chidu Krishnamurti threw in there that they couldn't disagree with, as is often the case, is that uh, something that makes a human different than a computer is insight. Um, for insight is not born of thought, or at least it's not born of thought from the past. It's not born of the personal consciousness. It's something that just sort of comes into existence, uh, if it comes at all, when you shut up. <laughs> um, so, you know, Einstein will have a partial insight. He gave the example of, and somebody I think had talked about Beethoven or somebody, you know, having partial insights that then they work out. Then once you've got the insight into, say, relativity, um, it comes to you in a flash and then you work it out. And that working it out becomes 
the thought process. So computers don't have insight, or at least they didn't in 1981. Um, or robots. Or Tobor, the robot spelled backwards. You're welcome. You're welcome, nostalgia freaks. Uh, so... So, great. So there's a good launching pad for what what is this insight. And I thought, well, maybe we can even narrow it down more and um, apply it to some of the issues people have had uh, in talking to me about this stuff and that they want there to be a process, right? People want there to be um, a meditation, a chant, um, a yogic whatever <laughs> that they can do, a secret, that they can hold um, that will bring them to the door of what? Enlightenment, whatever that means. Um, well, let's see if we can un unravel why that's not possible. Because uh, what is insight? Let's start there. What is insight? Direct perception, right? Simple enough. Insight is direct perception um, of a whole movement, really, like a real insight, not a partial insight, is the direct perception of the whole, I want to say problem, so let's just say problem, the, the whole problem um, or issue at hand uh, to the point of complete clarity. Booyah! Um, and so, uh, now, if I have an insight, if I have direct perception, if I have clarity, just like that, and you come along, and you say, I don't have that, I want that, how do I get that? Then you're asking for steps, you're asking for a process, right? You wanna know how to do that. Uh, but clearly there is no how to do that because it just came like that. So, um, so I think when people have insights that they then put down into books um, and say, okay, here's your process of um, being one who can also have insights, that that is not true. And it doesn't mean that they're lying on purpose. It just means that um, all of that process that they think they are perhaps altruistically writing out um, for the better of humanity or whatever um, is an after the fact notion, right? So they had an insight and it was boom. I hope I didn't just snap a bunch of times and it screwed up my microphone and made everything silent like it's been doing the past few things. I'm sorry. I'll try not to snap anymore. Um, or snap anymore. You like the facial hair, by the way? Or is this just kind of creepy, like a guy who would snap? I don't know. That, forget that. We're, we're, we're moving on. The point is, uh, as I laugh at my own stupidity, um, insight happens in a flash. Thinking about it later, uh, it's tempting to come up with processes and long drawn out explanations and things, but that, that just simply um, isn't a, a viable option to the flash of insight. So what does it take for one to have the mind um, appropriate for the flash of insight or flashes of insights? Uh, that's the real thing here. Um, this is the trick, this is the nuance, right? You, in mechanical mode, mechanical mind mode, want a process, or you want steps, or you want uh, some sort of help. Uh, and anything else in life that is a specialty, you can get that help. Uh, but it doesn't apply to this specific subject. Um, but you don't know that. <laughs> because why wouldn't it? It applies to everything else. Uh, so really what you have to do or what has to occur is the, um, the, the getting out of mechanical mind mode, the person who needs that help, um, the person who is searching for a way to have profound insights or whatever. Um, that mode of you has to not be the case of you anymore. Um, so you, you, you come to someone who has direct perception um, of the things that appeal to you in some way, and uh, you say, how do I get there? And the answer is, you don't, and it sounds all riddly. It sounds like a riddle, but it really is true. Uh, you don't. <laughs> you have to go away. You have to be the thing that goes away uh, for direct perception to be the case. Uh, and then you get to sound like you went to college. I mean, I did go to college, but you, you know what I mean. So perhaps the question is, uh, what is the state of mind uh, 
uh, that that is required for insight to occur, and it is a non-mechanical mind. It is non-mechanical mode, um, non-rational mode, non-thinker mode. Um, how do we get there? And then it's tempting to say, well, we meditate, and, and but forget all of that. Just think of what I'm, I've been trying to tell you here all along, which is what are all of these meditations, yoga? What is all of that for? What is the totality of all of those failed systems? Uh, what are they attempting to get you to do? They're attempting to get you to stop thought, right? To narrow thought down. Um, you chant, you do a whatever. You want to narrow thought down uh, because you're getting rid of uh, forms, in this case thought forms, in, inside of your brain. Uh, you're having them dissolve so that there's more room for formless uh, awareness to come through. And another way to put that is to say that what you're really doing is getting rid of your personal self so that the impersonal self uh, can shine through. So, uh, if that all makes some sort of sense to you, um, the reason that those things fail, uh, besides they're after the fact, someone jotting down their own experience and going, look, do this to achieve this, which is nonsense. Um, for the reasons that I just explained, and also uh, nonsense, um, because they all seem to uh, still have you as the actor, Right? It's you narrowing down thought. So even in those meditations and those yogas and those chants, there's still you as the thinker, separate from the thoughts, trying to narrow those thoughts down. And I think this is the very delicate point that's been missing for uh, as long as it took Jiddu Krishnamurti to say it out loud uh, for about 100 years. <laughs> and then before he died. Uh, and then, then that fell on deaf ears because nobody had heard this before, I don't think. Um, or at least not as directly. It's always like flowery, hidden in prose, and that sort of thing. Um, but we're not those people anymore, right? We're the we need an instruction manual, and we by God we need rationality and whatever. So this is your rationality, folks. Uh, take it or leave it. You want um, insights? Tough. I guess it's part one. If you but let's rewind. If you want insights. Uh, <laughs> Then, then somehow the personal has to give way to the impersonal, for that is where insight comes from. The personal you is you taking from your past uh, and drawing upon that, right? That's what we do with thought. The impersonal comes in a flash and it's not from personal you, because personal you is the illusion uh, that is born of the brain, and the impersonal you is humanity, human consciousness. Um, and then, of course, universal. Uh, you know, I guess you'd say beyond that or whatever, but uh, the important thing here is, um, you know, again, Jiddu Krishnamurti has said this, eight million people have said this, you know, the world is you, you are the world. That's what that means. It means that when you get past this illusion uh, of the personal you that is being projected by the brain, then you were confronted by the fact that what is informing the brain um, through flashes of insight or whatever and drips and drabs here and there in your life, um, it, 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 it's like a flashing arrow pointing to itself saying, no, 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 this is what's more real than you is this, is human consciousness. Uh, so it's all of us, right? So this is why there are, you know, to say that there are Muslims and Christians and Jews and whatever's Buddhists and Hindus is nonsense. To say that there are British people and German people and American people and Indian people and is nonsense. I mean, these are divides that, that the brain creates, right? Uh, but really, there's human consciousness impersonally sitting in the back there and informing the finger puppet uh, from afar broken down further into conscious and unconscious, right? Um, so how do we make the unconscious conscious? Uh, the conscious mind is you, so get rid of that. Well, not you get rid of that, but hear what I'm saying. Learn how to listen. Uh, learn how to listen to what I'm saying in such a way 
um, or someone else who's saying the exact same thing that that's uh, not me, maybe you find more appealing, um, it, learn how to listen so that it actually affects you uh, because it's not something that you're arguing against. You know, this is what we want to do. We want to argue against um, or we want to take from it and, and make it uh, make sense with what we're already doing. And we want to take the bits that we like and discard the... No, 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 no. <laughs> it doesn't, no, that doesn't work. And why? Because this is the impersonal fact of impersonal truth that, I, that I'm trying to get to here. And so all of this brings me to another point, uh, which is when I was talking to the two co-hosts about their atheism and um, uh, trying to get them to admit to nothingness as a formless Necessarily, an informless intelligence, if you say there's a concept before all things, you're talking about intelligence. Um, and then I asked um, Emma, who is one of the co-hosts, uh, so what does what does nothing or what does nothingness mean to you? Mean, not mean to you. I said, what does it mean? And then she said, well, what it means to me is, and then thought about it, and I said, no, 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 not to, what does it mean to you? What does it mean? It has a meaning. What is nothingness? And that's when... I'd said, it's a concept, right? Can we all agree it's a concept? So this got me to thinking about yet another issue here in our postmodern world, which is, um, and this is huge, not just in the New Age, but all over the West now, uh, which is to say that there is no such thing as, as uh, an objective fact. There is no such thing as truth. There is just whatever your own subjective experience is. We create our own reality, reality tunnels, and, and this sort of thing. Um, and we discard the other. And the, this is, to, uh, to my mind, this is a reaction to dictatorship and to religion. Um, because religions say, I know, and here's what I know, and you better believe this or else. Um, and dictators say the same thing. I am it, and you better believe me or else. Uh, so when we see um, something that is uh, sharing the same language of a surety, um, but isn't saying or else. <laughs> it's still stuck in our minds, the or else. Uh, so I think we, we go, no, no, wait, we fear, we fear that. And we go, no, 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 it's just about whatever you and I believe that becomes our reality, you know. Um, and in the sense that, that that is how you live your life, this is true. But in the sense that uh, the subjective personal ego self is the only real thing uh, in this notion of an impersonal um, humanity <laughs> uh, whose full force comes through you uh, as drips and drabs of insights or whatever. Um, you would have to be denying that, essentially. You would have to say that there is no such thing as insight that is not from your own personal self. Uh, so these, I, And this is something that I don't think anyone's really approached. This, because you can't have your cake and, and eat it too here. Uh, you can't say, yes, I believe in insights and, and this, but on the other hand, only subjective experience is true because these are impersonal, right? And so uh, when I say, no, 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 not what do you think about the meaning of nothingness, but what is the meaning? Um, that's not me being a dictator or judgmental or a dick. That's probably me being a dick. But it's not the uh, first two things. That's because I, you know, I have had, or whatever, direct insight, direct perception of, of the totality of this. And I and so I know what, where I'm coming from, and um, then my assumption is you will too. <laughs> when when you see it, or if, if it comes to you as an insight, it will be the exact same insight. Uh, it may have a different flavor because it's coming through your processes uh, in some way, your cultural and personal psychology and all that. Um, which sort of build a little, weave a little cocoon around it once it comes out of your mouth or, or uh, aha moment as the light bulb goes off. Um, but prior to that unfortunate bit of business, uh, it is the same truth because truth is truth uh, and it is therefore objective um, in the sense that it is not coming from one's personal psychology. Um so I, this is a whole bunch of issues that just poured out of me at lightning speed, and I apologize for that. Um, but maybe you can hit rewind and uh, make them make sense. Because hmm? that's what we do, right? We make sense. We're sense makers. 
makers of sense.